Welcome to the opening day edition of This Week in Missouri Politics. We're here at the state capitol in Jeff City, joined by the Senate Majority Leader, Senator Cindy Olaf from Shelby County. Thank you for making the time. Thank you for having me on. So I, you, you were on the show in December. We had a talk. You, I'm sure you had some idea of how you wanted things to go. By all accounts, whether you're Democrat, Republican, whatever kind of Republican you are, it's had to probably exceed your expectations of how well things have went. Well, you know, I, I feel like people are more dedicated to trying to get things done. I think that's a part of it. Um, we have some new people, the first one class that came in. Most of them are seasoned legislators. They're very helpful. So, you know, we have a good group. You know, that freshman class is impressive. It's big, first of all. Yeah. But but there's some impressive people in there. And and you're right. There is an attitude in that freshman class. It's almost like a no drama attitude. Yeah. I, I think some of them sat on the window side of the building and, and watched the Senate the last couple of years and were like, okay, this does not, this isn't <laughs> great. And there's almost like a very um, workman type mentality of just let's cut the drama. So um, I tried to talk to everybody really almost every day kind of see what's on their mind, how things are going for them. I try to look ahead to see what legislation is coming up, where there might be some conflict between two people, and get to that before it turns into something big. And that seems to work. It has worked. It feels like, you know, it, it, there's, a, there's a method you have to go through to bring a bill to the Senate floor. But when you, you're the, you're the leader, but there is, the, 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 the calendar is something that you're tied to by the rules. However, it does feel like when you went to bills this year, you're actually going to bills that you have some idea of a framework of how you're going to get them passed instead of just, it's almost like usually Wild West. The bill gets on the floor. Who knows what's going to happen? Right. Well, we try to let people know ahead of time, too. I think that is one thing we haven't done very well is let them know what to expect. And I think I said in my first interview with you that if people know what to expect, then they can sort of formulate in their mind how they want to interact with that. And so then you don't have last minute um, kind of, oh, I didn't know that was going to happen today or something that then creates a rub between people. I watch you and when I see you operate, things like moving the Senate to start at one instead of doing a 10 o'clock and then coming back at another time, it, it, it looks as though you apply some business principles to the Senate. And so far those seem to have went well. Yes. well. You know, when you're in business and you're trying to get everyone to understand what the goal is, how you would like them to go about getting to that goal, what they can do if a problem arises, I mean, that very same thing applies here. I let people know, you know, if you have a problem with something or you'd like to see something different, just let me know. So communication is really very key. And in anything, in business or here or anywhere, you get to a problem before it becomes a giant problem. It's yeah. all about communication. Let's talk about one. It, it seemed like the capstone of that was Senator Rader had a bill about trans kids in sports. Senator Moon had a bill about essentially how, you know, there's been some allegations that Wash U has been treating some kids that are transgender and some of the ways that's been done, he, he had some very strong thoughts about it. His bill, um, it felt like it started off in session, you would have said, well, that probably doesn't pass. But it picked up a lot of momentum and steam. And I think everybody in the chamber thought you was going to have to do a PQ to pass that bill. And then after spring break, I think folks were even more pessimistic about the situation. You come back, it took all night, but that's all right, right? Uh, and, and you pass that bill without a PQ. What went into that? Well... We know it's an explosive topic. We know people have strong emotions about it. So like everything else, she tried to set the stage. Um, I talked to Senator, Senator Moon several times about the bill. I um, insisted that we not bring it up until we were ready. You know, we had that little <laughs> thing where we had to lay it over. And um, I had all the negotiation in my office so that I could control how many people were trying to intervene in it, trying to cut down the distractions and other people trying to weigh in and maybe getting Senator Moon off track. And, you know, it seemed to work. 
So. Well, scoreboard uh, shows it did work. It did work. That's your question, though. I mean, you're a mother. I've watched you be an empathetic person. There's certain people that portray this as you're doing something to target this, these kids. I, I think everybody has a heart for a kid who feels as though they're born in the wrong body. Right, wrong, and whatever. <clears throat> if a kid feels that way, you have a heart for that person going through a tough time. Absolutely. I mean, I, when I was the chair of the education committee, we had people come in and um, testify about the situation in their family. And I think that our whole society right now is, you know, sort of in an uproar. And people have, in some cases, resorted to, you know, flinging names across the aisle at each other or not even trying to understand that, you know, maybe this person doesn't feel like you do or maybe their experience is different, but that doesn't mean that you don't try to listen and try to work with them as best you can. Um, you know, I have four children and, and a foster daughter and seven grandchildren. So um, everybody's different, and I think that everybody needs to be respected. So we tried to be sure that we were cognizant of that, and um, even um, Senator Razor, who feels very personally about the situation, we worked very hard with him. And I'll tell you, Senator Rowden, um, spent weeks, weeks talking to various people about it. And, you know, he, he has um, a little more, I say, a golden touch with people more than I do. <laughs> maybe that, maybe that's why we're a good pair. And uh, it just worked, you know? You know or I, watching from the peanut gallery where I sat, <clears throat> it appeared as though Cinder Rizzo and Cinder Razor truly cared about the Senate. And their goal was your goal was to to try to do this through the normal framework, because it, it was clear. I mean, I the the people that vote for you, they want to see something happen. I I think that whether the Post Dispatch and the Star believe it or not, folks in Shelby County probably no one's upset with your vote, and getting that done took a lot of understanding on their part of the fight. Um, you know, Senator Rizzo is probably one of my favorite persons in the Senate, and I drove to Kansas City the week before we brought the bill up, and we had breakfast at my invitation, and then he paid for it, and I felt bad about that, but he said he's Italian, and his mother would kill him if he didn't pay for it, but you just need to try to be human with people, and he he's a great leader for his party. He's always working to try to find a good path. And um, it, it, in this situation, he was very helpful. It, tell folks, explain how important it is. You're the leader of the Republican caucus. He's the Democrat caucus. But the two of you working together, really, without that, the place kind of grinds to a halt. It, you know, another thing about today's world, people throw so many bombs from both sides of the aisle. And some people want to demand that you can't even listen to anybody else. It has to be their way or the highway. You know, nothing really works well if you have that kind of attitude. And um, I am always willing to listen to people, and I've learned a lot of things. I'm not always right. I have strong opinions, but I'm, I'm willing to listen to people. And, you know, sometimes I've changed my mind. So I think Democrats and Republicans, at least the group that we have here, we agree on probably 80% yeah. of the issues. So let's don't always concentrate on the 20 or the 15, whatever it turns out to be that we don't agree on. And let's try to get something done for the state because obviously there's a whole range of opinions out here in the state of Missouri. So if you can find a good ground and make something happen, go that way. So <clears throat> six weeks left now. Yeah. When people, by the time people watch this, the Cardinals have played two games. They're ready for their third. What can folks expect from the from the legislature, not even just the Senate? I mean, you have a whole other chamber to negotiate with. What should folks expect the next few weeks in the legislature? Well, you know, I don't know if it's possible to communicate more but for me, but um, I'm trying to stay as close to House leadership as I can and to the people on our side. 
And, you know, we have a lot of people coming in that want to talk about their legislation and how do we get it across the finish line. Things kind of start picking up speed and you feel like you've got a thousand things coming down the road, but you know you can only get to a few of those. And I just try to keep communicating and trying to help people get done what's important. In May, when you head back to Shelby County, what is something you'd be disappointed if it doesn't happen? Well, you know, I really like everyone in the Senate, and I think my goal is for people to say, we got our priorities done, and we're a good working team, and we're looking forward to next year. I don't want people to leave here with old conflicts or anger or anything, but let's go forward in a positive way. I don't know anybody that left last May enjoying it or really it felt like people just did not want to be here anymore right it is not the way it feels right now even even over spring break which left a little awkward i don't think people were like dreading oh gosh and too to come back to this you know what i mean <laughs> i know people sometimes people think why did she adjourn you know a day early well i could see that we were coming to an impasse and maybe that was my fault at my scheduling I mean, I take responsibility for that, and I knew if we stayed, it would escalate. So we were better off to leave, let everybody kind of cool down, come back and get it done, and that's what happened. I mean, the scoreboard, there, whatever your opinions are, the one thing about politics is a scoreboard. If you're running a race, there's going to be a vote count on election night. In the Senate, there is a vote that, that happened or doesn't happen, and how it turns out, I mean, it's got to be hardened when being criticized, but then... Literally, the first legislative day you come back, it might have taken until Tuesday morning sometime, but you pass the bill in a way that I don't think many people thought. It has to, it has to be a little hardening when you see people complain about leaving a day early, but in hindsight, the scoreboard. Whatever your opinion on that decision was, the scoreboard showed it worked out. You know, while I do care what everyone, how everyone feels about what's happening, I am used to making decisions that sometimes people don't like, but I feel comfortable in knowing that I have communicated with everybody and I'm doing what I think is right and that's what I have to do. And so far it's worked out. Senator, oh, after we get done, we see the final scoreboard in May. You'll go back and talk about it with us on this week in Missouri Politics. All right, thank you. We'll be right back with Opinion Maker. We got three commissioners coming in for Opinion Maker. We'll talk all things county government after this, but first, Go to showtomissouri.com. This is Missouri, one county at a time. Go learn all about no the great Northeast, Clark County, Marion County, Shelby County even. On Show Missouri, this is Missouri, one county at a time. We'll be right back after this. For more than a century, the St. Louis Carpenters Union has shaped our communities. Through trusted alliances, we deliver skilled professional craftspeople while our business partners provide the kind of quality jobs that keep our economy humming. It's a blueprint that has worked since 1882. Turning Missouri into a right-to-work state stalls progress, wipes out jobs, and kills momentum. Right-to-work is wrong for everyone. Let's keep Missouri moving forward. Visit carpdc.org to learn more. All throughout Missouri, businesses are struggling to find workers. Childcare challenges are a big reason why. Our kids are losing out too. Through high-impact early childhood investments, we can support the workforce of today and better prepare our workforce of tomorrow. Empower families with the resources they need to succeed. Reduce crime and avoid costly interventions, saving taxpayers money. Together, we can make Missouri the best place to work, raise a family, and be a kid. We all know puppy mills, cruelty, neglect, and pet store puppies are at high risk for disease, even death. We expect our laws to protect dogs, but now an out-of-state company called Petland is trying to change our state law to enable puppy mill cruelty. We all know it'll hurt the dogs we love. Contact your state legislators. Tell them, protect our dogs. Vote no on the cruelty. Vote no on the harmful puppy mill bill. Data captured by our state-of-the-art monitors helps us pinpoint the timing and location of severe weather more accurately and respond to trouble more quickly. Ameren Missouri's investment in smart technologies like this is one way we're improving reliability and restoring power faster than ever. Responding to trouble before trouble hits. That's energy at work. 
Cameron, Missouri. Welcome back to this week in Missouri Politics. We are joined by our opinion maker panel of three county commissioners. We'll put a change of pace for you. Tim Bringer from Freedom Love in Franklin County. Welcome back, sir. Well, thank you, Scott. Thanks for having us. Ryan Poston, Montgomery County, the home county of Andrew Bailey, right? That's true. Thanks for having us. Uh, he's kind of doing you proud so far, right? Good guy. Very good guy. Well, Gary Younger from the Kingdom of Callaway. Very nice to have you on the show, sir. Thank you, sir. It's good to be here. Ryan, it's interesting. Anytime you hear biggest tax cut in state history, you're like, that's good, right? Good deal. I'm sure everybody liked it, right? But you had to be a little surprised when you actually read the fine print and the state's wanting to cut taxes, but they're really wanting to cut your budget, not their budget. That's that's a very good point to make. Well, there are actually two bills, I believe. One's uh, for cutting property tax, the other one's for uh, cutting the sales tax. Uh, Senate Bill 8, Senate Bill 141, correct? I got my numbers right, don't I? I think so. I think I got no eight right. I try not to. A lot of folks usually have to keep their numbers. Yeah, exactly. You know, but uh, there's a, there's this old saying: uh, "Good fences make good neighbors." <laughs> uh, how about they stay in their passion, we'll stay in our pasture. If they want to cut, I mean, whack away at the state budget, leave us alone. We 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 talk about local control all the time, and that was a big word during COVID: local control. Nobody wanted to make a decision up here. So we make decisions, so let us make our decisions to take care of what we know how to take care of. Don't you leave people alone, you'd be the state mayor. <laughs> you're back to the ministry of the state for the most part, or leave the, to be left alone. I do think it was a little frustrating. But like, you have snow many legislators, and I, you work hard, you get elected, and you know, knock all the doors, do the things you do. Then once you're elected, you want to come up here and you're a Republican, right? You want to cut taxes, they're like, boo. We've already cut taxes about as much as we can cut taxes. The court's going to not let us do any more to refund this case. Okay, fine. I'm going to get rid of abortion. Oh, come here, pal. Uh, there's no more abortions. I want to have three-year-olds have rocket launchers. Uh, sorry, pal. Three-year-olds have rocket launchers. There's not a lot to do. And it feels like to me, it's it's almost a natural inertia of you want to get in this so bad, you want work so hard to get here, and then the stuff you want to do, you can't do. So, well, the state legislature's job's kind of done. So I'm going to go, I'm going to be a school board member. I'm going to be a county commissioner. And then they start kind of trying to get their big tax increase to get their Facebook likes, but they're in your pocket, not theirs. That's exactly right. And, you know, there's there's a lot to be said for uh, county positions being the retirement ground for legislators. Uh, <laughs> I, don't know why I don't know any of those. But, uh, <laughs> but, but, but then they come back sometimes and link it up. But, uh, but that, that being said, it, it is fascinating, and, and what I would love, and I know what counties would love to see more of, is uh, perhaps if you if we're out of opportunity to constrict slash make laws, maybe we repeal some of these laws that are on the books that are archaic, i.e. the laws that uh, have set up counties in Missouri since 1938. I can't tell you the amount of statutes you can go back up, hitching your horse up in front of the building uh, is illegal between the hours of X, Y, Z, or what have you, that are in the books that just get left there and consume all of this resource that we have in our state. I appreciate those legislators that come to the table with an idea or a concept. What I don't appreciate is enacting that concept or idea without fiscal impact research to the nth degree from a county perspective. And that's what lacks. Yeah. In the kingdom of Callaway, it would be interesting to me to see, I mean, look, a, a, allowing the folks in the kingdom of Callaway to cut their taxes, Seems like a good thing. If people want to put some on the ballot, or if you want to put some on the ballot, it says, hey, we're going to eliminate the food tax. That sounds like a good option to give you, but coming from the state, the state could just cut its share of the food tax and leave the rest alone, right? Correct. You know, and I think in, in Callaway, you know, we've been fortunate. I mean, since I've been in office, we've actually passed a couple different taxes, a law enforcement tax, and then we also mm -hmm. passed the, the use tax, which is without it we would not be able to do the things that we do. I mean, if we would not have gotten those taxes passed and, and our citizens knew that and passed it, you know, probably 70% in favor of, of, of those taxes. So, you know, for the state then to come back and start taking it away, it just defeats the purposes of what we've tried to accomplish over the last 10 to 12 years. Ryan, you've, you've been familiar with some of these legislators now. It feels to me like when you're up here, you're dealing with billions of dollars. The state budget is like $50 billion. A billion dollars is almost so far from anybody really understanding. The state is so vast, you don't really always see the actual people or the things you do from the state budget. But at the county level, if you had to cut $100,000, folks in Montgomery County would see that. They would know the person you're firing. 
or they would see the road you're not taking care of. It is a different type of government when you actually could see the difference you make. Well, I, I well, yeah, that's, that's a good point, and I think we're kind of living, we're kind of living in the in the world now of defund the police or whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's hard hiring people, it's hard retaining people, quali qualified people. I mean, it, everything's it's not getting easier, but then they're not making it easier up here because. You know, we get elected to do our job, and then statute dares you to do your job. So we're trying to work within, as Tim mentioned, what the statute set up for us, how we how we work, and uh, it's not fun Sunday. You know, Gary, for for a long time you now, the folks in the suburbs have had a lot of ideas for how our friends in the city of St. Louis should run their government, right? And most people, I think, in, in, if you go to commissioner conference, I'll bet they sound like pretty decent ideas. But it feels like now they've turned their guns on rural Missouri, and now the suburban people want to run rural Missouri. They want to. Close your schools. They want to cut your cut your county government budget. It is it is interesting. It feels like there's that fence that we always kind of like between us and the suburban folks. They've been wanting to kick down. Yeah, you know the yeah. I'll use Callaway for an example. The people that live in Callaway County, similar to, to to Montgomery and even Franklin, they moved there for a reason. A lot of them moved over the past several years. They wanted to come to a place where they weren't maybe governed as much. Yep. And and had some freedoms. You know. And and now. You're right. That that's being, and then some of the ideas from inside, um, you know, suburban America, are moving out into the country, which uh, has caused some conflicts with, with ag and everything else. So, well, Tim, I watch you. You're one of the one of the growing counties in the state, Franklin County. You have you sort of are experiencing that. You've got folks that lived on a cul-de-sac now mixing with folks that live on a county road. It really is that gravel road cul-de-sac divide. It really kind of meets in Franklin County right now. Yeah, absolutely. And, and we're part of the impacted, if you will, of the exodus of the St. Louis region. People that are tired of the lawlessness going on in the city of St. Louis and beyond, they're coming west. They're going to St. Charles County. They're coming to Franklin County, going to Jefferson County, because they know that people get prosecuted for the crimes they commit. They get incarcerated if they're found guilty, and justice is served. Whereas 50% of the time, Half of the felonious cases in the city of St. Louis don't get prosecuted. And we as taxpayers, everybody in the city of Missouri, ends up paying for it in the long run. And it's ridiculous, and we need to address it. So, but how do you, I, I hear these stories of people leaving California and going to Texas. Mm -hmm. But they take their politics with them. How do you, when you see Chad from the suburbs, who's the new resident of New Haven, you say, uh, Chad, we'll talk to you for a second here. Um, you know all this stuff you were for in the suburbs? There's a reason you're here now. We don't do that. It's got to be kind of an awkward conversation, right? Well, it is, but it's also refreshing in the opportunity to educate and, uh, you know, enlighten people on the ways that they really, in freedom, it's not just a, a catch line, it's real, and we need to really appreciate that and educate people on the value of it. And back to the state legislators that we're very fond of, don't get me wrong, this is not a state legislator bashing, because there are great things that get done here in Jefferson City, we're grateful for it. Uh, you know, my, our Senator Ben Brown has done great things already in his early campaign here, so we're grateful for that. But that being said, we have to make sure that what the message is is concise, deliberate, and delivered appropriately for those we represent. You know, you look at what I think of a person that's got judgment and sins. I think of Travis Hitchwater. He was in the state Senate. When you sit down with him, I mean, what do you tell him? Just say, hey, you know, we're all for you cutting your budget, but let's keep that fence away from ours, right? That, that's correct. You know, and I think, and I've had that conversation with him. I believe. Um, but I, I think the pressure that's put on some of these people up here um, by outsiders, you know, and whatnot for different reasons, because you'll hear him say once in a while, well, what is it that we can do? Because can, can we help them? You know, so they're, they're asking the questions and hopefully they are listening to the answer because at the end of the day, the three of us sitting here are not lawmakers. We're service providers in general. That's what we do. And so we have to be able to provide those services, whether it's a county road, whether it's the health departments, whether it's 911, you name it, whatever we do, we have to provide those services and, and we got to do it the best we can. And I've watched some of the counties kind of be laboratories for innovation. You do something well in a county, other counties copy it, the state copies it ultimately. I watch with solar. It's something that's coming to different, different parts of the state strategically have some land they could do. You guys developed your own plan, right? That other now other counties are copying for how you would go about essentially regulating some of these solar farms. Yes, uh, we we kind of started getting inundated with them a few years ago, or whatever, and there, we kind of had a chapter in our plan in its zoning, but it was I use Tim's word again, archaic or whatever what we had, you know, because nobody thought it was going to 
be to what it is. And we got the one down there at, uh, I said to you there, Ameren put in, but Ameren had bought the ground, you know, 10 years ago, whatever, and said, baby, we're going to put a solar panel. Okay. You know, didn't think much of it, but uh, it was a year and a half process of going through all the dotting the I's, crossing the T's, make sure everything's right. And now you've got the, the state trying to assess this, to tax this or whatever. I'm going to go back to my common theme. Please leave us alone. <laughs> But, but uh, the, what's the, what regular the scariest words in the English language are up with the government I'm here to help you. Maybe you had the eighth word. I'm from the state government I'm here to help you. Some, then I guess, but just, you know, and, and I, I've had this conversation with Travis Fitzwater. I said, I said, we've got a blueprint right here. I send it to you. I said, you could do this statewide to help other counties that don't have planning in the zoning like we do. That, that th there's lots of neat stuff for you could be doing that would actually benefit everybody. And I said, but you're just looking at. Oh, we got to assess. We've got to tax this, and you get assessors involved, and it's it's uh. Well, always know there's two types of assessors. There's assessors that work for the school system, and work for the taxpayers, right? <laughs> you gotta just pick your jersey when you're an assessor. Where are you gonna be? Uh, Tim, tell me about rural broadband. I mean, one of the reasons folks can move from Chesterfield. I know I know a person that lived there. They said they did a year in Chesterfield. They'd rather done two in Folsom, and move out to Franklin yeah. County. <laughs> but you gotta have broadband, right? Right. Absolutely. Connectivity is key. And uh, there's been a ton of federal dollars thrown at it, uh, grants awarded from the FCC as of, what, four years ago, um, Whisper Technologies sweeping through Missouri with their hundreds of millions they were awarded a grant. Walk me through right now. If you're on Realtor.com in the city and you're looking for a place in Franklin County, does Washington have rural broadband? Oh, yeah. And then New Haven, I assume? Uh, yep. Two degree. What well, about yeah. down in Shottsville and Solihull? Union. Oh, yeah. Shottsville has it. Yeah. And, and Union? Yeah. But, uh, the major... Metropolitan areas that we call it Franklin, yeah. uh, yes, are, are have full service oh, typically, right. but the rural areas still a lot of necessary need there. So, well, how much of uh, Callaway County right now is rural broadband? Pretty much all of it. Nice, because our co our uh, co-op, like well, the co-ops are the key. Are um, yeah. they, they have they have pretty much taken care of it. We we've got a few, but it's those ones that are one or two houses, and it's yeah. a mile and a half, two miles to get to them, and neither one of them run up, want it right now. Yeah. So it hasn't been done. With a minute left to record one the week. Well, I would say those of the state legislature that are trying to fix the uh, issue in St. Louis, the economic engine of this state is under dire straits right now, and it's because of the crime rate. And we need to address it, and I really respect those uh, at the Senate and on representative level and the speaker uh, trying to fix what is totally broken in the city of St. Louis from crime. Again, I can't say it enough. We're all paying the price for the lack of execution. I heard Mike Kelly say once you could have a suburb to nowhere. Amen. Who won the week? Who won the week? Yep. You know, I just think county governments in general won the week because at the end of the day, we're struggling um, like everybody is with employees and everything else. So just trying to keep up and stay on task. Um, I give credit to a lot of county governments across the state and across this country. Who won the week? My hometown boy, Andrew Bailey. Your constituent yeah. doing the job. Yeah. The Tim's talking Take care of Tim's job right there. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, he yeah. is. He, he's hit the ground running. He's doing well. Probably going to be one of the best attorney general we've ever had in the state. Uh, I'm going to say, even on this opening day weekend for the Cardinals, I think Kansas City may win the week. I saw some drawings for that downtown stadium. And uh, what an awesome place that's doing well in Kansas City. Putting a ballpark downtown might be the capstone on that. I will say Kansas City won the week. Hope you'll win the week next week by joining us here on This Week in Missouri Politics. Week in Missouri Politics is sponsored by the Missouri Automobile Dealers Association, Ameren, Spire, and the United Electric Cooperative.